É melhor. Morning, Paula. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Morning, Sister Paula, Brother David, Sister K. Ashman Ellis. Morning. And for the others who are signed on, morning and welcome to another morning's devotion. I trust that the word that will be shared will be a blessing to you. I, I trust that. Through this word, your spirit will be lifted and you'll be challenged to keep on going, challenged to continue being obedient to the word of God and to the things, will of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your blessing, Almighty God. Uh, blessing to wake us up and afford us the opportunity to get to our places of employment safely. Thank you for those who are home. We thank you, God, that you woke us up in our right minds. That today we can celebrate this gift one more time. Lord, as I seek now to share your word with your people. I pray God that you'll bless 
each and every person who will listen this word this morning. Let somebody find something in the word that is that that will be enough to keep them to carry them through their day. Oh God, we pray for your your blessing, mighty God. Pray that Spirit of God, you will speak to me right now, that I may share freely with this with your people. We ask your blessing, mighty God, upon your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brethren, again, good morning. <clears throat> I want to share with you this from this morning's devotion. Um, for this morning's devotion from the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Morning, my brother, pastor. Um, Jonah chapter 2 Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish and said I called out of my trouble and distress to the Lord and he answered me Out of the belly of Sheol I cried for help and you heard my voice For you cast me into the deep into the deep heart of the seas and the currents surrounded and engulfed me. All your breakers and billowings, wave, billowing waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again toward your holy place. The waters surrounded me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I descended to the very low, to the very roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me, bolting me in forever. Yet you have brought me up, brought up my life from the pit, from death, O Lord my God. When my soul was fainting, Within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who regard and follow worthless idols, turn away from their living source of mercy and loving kindness. But, as for me, I will sacrifice to you, with the voice of thanksgiving, I shall pay that which I have vowed, salvation is from the Lord. So the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up unto dry land. I want to also look at chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to Nineveh the great city and declare to it the message which i am going to tell you the word of the lord good morning to everyone who came on after the original morning was given big up was given i'm not preaching a sermon i just want to share something with you this morning but i want to use three points if i may be permitted to use a topic confined to conform this is this is something that is resting on me that there are come there, 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 there are times when we're going to be confined in order to conform to the word to the will of god in this case with jonah jonah was Sent, Jonah was sent on a specific mission for God. And Jonah felt that it was best that he didn't go. And he opted to go where he wanted to go. And you know the story. That the Lord sent a storm on the sea. And Jonah was placed in a situation where he just couldn't outrun the Lord. 
And the men on the boat, he requested the men on the boat to throw him overboard. But when he was requesting that, he didn't know that God had put in place a plan for him to preserve him. So even in our disobedience, God will always preserve us. But I don't want to focus on that right now. The first thing I want to say to us today, that God has a way where we, he, he causes us to be backed in, to be confined to a space where, where, where we have to be compelled to listen to what he has to say. God has a way to back us in a corner, in the midst of everything, in the midst of the excitement, in the midst of life in the midst of you flourishing in the midst of things happening for you god has a way to back you in a corner to get your attention because if he must get your attention he will let me say that again if god must get your attention then god will get your attention and so because he had sent Jonah, he had given Jonah specific instructions, and Jonah decided to go his own way, God caused him to be backed in a space where he, God, could get Jonah's attention, and where Jonah had no one else to turn to but to turn back to God. So Jonah was backed in a corner. Because he, his mistake had to be pointed out to him. The fact that he, he was living in error had to be pointed out to him. And so we read here in chapter 2 that Jonah prayed to the Lord from the stomach of the fish. Now one school of thought says, the different schools of thought say what kind of fish it is but all the scriptures tell me is that it was a great fish and jonah prayed when jonah was backed in a corner jonah prayed to his god i am saying to you this morning that there are times when all the walls seem highest there are times when the room we're locked in seem to have no door nor window and there is no way out. But God will always provide a way out. All we have to do in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our crisis, in the midst of whatever is going on around us, when we're backed in a corner and we can't go left nor right, and we can't go any further back, what we need to do is like Jonah, cry out to God. For when we read Jonah's prayer, we realize that when Jonah prayed out of a heart of sincerity, while Jonah was praying, he did not even know, we did not even know, but I believe that while Jonah was talking to God, the Lord had already commanded the great fish to swim towards dry land. Did the fish come and wait for Jonah to finish praying? I don't know. But when Jonah, being backed in his corner, he prayed to God. And the, the Lord commanded the fish to, to vomit Jonah up on dry land. As for the specifics and the logistics of how a great fish could vomit him out on dry land. I am not going into that theology. Because there are people who are still trying to reason out. That fish, great fish, fish of those size can't survive on dry land. And then the fish of, like, of those size can't swim. Can't swim to, to shallow areas. But when it comes on to the work of God. God can do what seems impossible to man for with god all things are possible i am saying to us today that when we seek to run from god 
God has a way to back us in a corner. And when you're backed up, because after you're backed in a corner, and you're backed up because your back is now against the wall, and you can't go nowhere, you have to know back up. Back up and look at where you err. Back up and admit that you have made a mistake. Back up and admit that you, yes, you, you disobeyed and you turned your own way. Back up and remember where God has sent you. Back up. When God backs you in a corner, it's for you to see yourself for the mistake that you have made. It is for you to look at how messed up you, you, you have gotten because you disobeyed the word of God. When God backs you in a corner, it is for you, my brother, you, my sister, to back up and do an introspection. See yourself for who you are. See yourself being where you are and looking at where you are. This is now where you start to do all the changes that need to be made. Because when God backs you in a corner, when God confines you, it's because he wants you to conform to his will. And so when Jonah was backed in and could not turn left or right, all he had around him was darkness. Out of that darkness, Jonah cried out to God. And light came when Jonah cried out to God. Because God sent help. Right? God commanded the fish to spit Jonah out on dry land. Let me say to you friends as I seek to bring this to a close as best as I can. When you are backed in a corner and you have done that, when you back up and look at the mistakes you make, look at how much you have failed, look at how much of a failure I am, look at how depressed my position has become, look at how distressing my situation has become. When that happens, it is no time for me to do what? Cry out to God. Where are you this morning, my friend? What corner are you backed in? Where have you erred? Where have I erred? And God is saying to me this morning, it's time to repent. What, what mistake have I made this morning? And God is saying, it is time. I have backed you up in this corner. My friend, I have backed you up in this corner, Veronica. I have backed you up in this corner, Herma. I have backed you up in this corner, Simone. I have backed you up in this corner, Brother Roshane. Because I want you to back up now and spend some time looking at your mistakes, seeing that I could have done worse with you. But because I am the God of a second chance, I am allowing you an opportunity. As we say in Jamaica, to wheel and come again. I am saying to you that when you find yourselves in a corner, backed up and there is nowhere to turn, it is not because God wants to punish you. It is not because God is punishing you. It is because God is saying to you, pause where you are and look at where I want you to be. Because you are not where you are supposed to be. And that is why I have placed you here in this corner. Yes, Sister Vera, we have to back up and look up. Introspection is necessary. And every now and then when you find yourself backed up in a corner, don't think it's because God is punishing you or God, is, God wants to kill you. It's because God wants to get your attention. He, he, he allowed the men to throw Jonah off the ship. But all this time, he was ministering to the, the great fish and commanding the great fish that, Hey, you're going to swallow, not eat this man. What an awesome God. You are going to swallow, not eat 
this man. You are not going to destroy him. You are going to keep him. Keep him until I am ready. Keep him until he sees himself. Keep him until he acknowledges the mistake that he has made. You are going to keep him until I am ready to deliver him. Until he is ready. Until he realizes that he has messed up. You are going to keep him. So when God backs you in a corner, he wants you to back up, relook, readjust. Because guess what? He has backed you up. He has backed you in a corner. He has caused you to back up because he wants you to come back again. He wants you to come back again. Know the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. The word the speaks to the fact that it had come to him already. It was not a different word that came to Jonah. The word of the Lord came to him the second time. What did the word say? Go to Nineveh, the great city, and declare to it the message which I am to tell you. God gave Jonah enough time to get to Nineveh. We don't know how easy it was to get to Nineveh from where he was. And God did not want him to forget the word. So God said, go and declare a word which I am going to give you. So Jonah went there without a word. But he would have gotten the word when he got to Nineveh. And if you read chapter 3 and 4, you will realize that when Jonah got to Nineveh, he indeed got the word from God. And he did what was needed to be done. Jonah delivered the word of God. And the people heard and acted upon the word of God. When, you, when God back you in a corner, friends, he has not written you off. He backs you in a corner because he's giving you an opportunity to back up and realize that he still has use for for you he wants you to realize that there is still work to be done he wants you to realize that you have something to do for him when he backs you in a corner and you have backed up all the things that was in front of you you bring it back to memory you back up and look back in yourself and you say what will thou have me to do you will realize like Saul that you cannot escape God you will just have to give in and prepare yourself to do the work that God is calling you to do when you're backed up in a corner many times it's for you to be to rebuild and come again it's for you to just refocus when you're backed up in a corner it's for you to refocus re-strengthen re-energize and come back because god still has work for you to do he wants you to come back again bigger and better so hear me now my friends as i bring this to a close if you find yourself right now in a position that you're backed up in a corner that you're backed in and can't move forward, use this time. In the belly of your great fish, cry out to God. Cry out to God like Jonah did. Confess and repent and allow God to bring you back stronger and better than before. If you find right now that God has confined you in a tight space, there is a way to get out. 
by conforming to the will of God. That's all you have to do. Having been backed up <clears throat> and backed in, you can come back again stronger. Stronger than you were before. But all you have to do is conform to the will of God. I like that, Sister Tracy. Disobedience gives us time out to realize what we have done. It's your call this morning, friends. Ask the Lord from in the belly, in the belly of your great fish, wherever you are this morning, spiritually, wherever you are physically, in the belly of your great fish, cry out to God from where you are. And I guarantee you, that he will open the windows of heaven. He will open a door for you where it seemed all along impossible. And he will do for you what you could not and cannot do for yourselves. It is no time to cry out to him and repent so that he can strengthen you and allow his word to come to you the second time. So we can go forward in his strength as he enables us. Amen and amen. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you for those who would have tuned in to watch, to listen. Those who commented. We pray, God, that we would take seriously this charge. That when we are backed in a corner with nowhere to turn, it is time for us to back up and realize that we are nothing without you. And realize that we can do nothing. We can go nowhere without you. It is time for us to back up and realize that it is not about the hype. It is not about the flashy life, but it's about conforming to your will. And having realized, mighty God, that we are nothing without you and we can do nothing without you, then we, having spent our three days and three nights in the belly of our great fish, whatever the fish may be, that we will come back again, stronger and more resolute, to go and do your will. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you. <clears throat> As you go through the rest of your day, one advice I give to you. Take the name of Jesus with you. Be careful where you are. Be careful. Maintain social distancing. Wear your mask. Sanitize as often as you can. But be careful and not fearful. God bless you. And again I say thanks to Pastor Lewis for affording me this privilege to share with his congregation and his friends. I do not take this for granted. God bless you, my friends. Walk good. Have a great day. As we are taken out by Bethel Music, I raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God bless you, one and all. Have a great day.